Welcome to, to everyone to this um, last appointment with the, the, the series of uh, webinar that we have organized on, uh, on buffalo farming. And uh, I, um, I would thank every, everyone uh, that uh, have, have been um, in... Uh, uh, <coughs> have been co connected with us in this um, in this event uh, I, I want to remember you that we all the all the webinar are uh, are uh, the registration of the webinar are on the our channel ebf channel on youtube and uh, in the in the chat you will um, you will uh, find the 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 link to the, this uh, to this channel so if you want to watch or rewatch some webinar uh, you can find uh, the registration there uh, i remember that um, uh, the the webinar um, during this uh, this webinar we have talked about buffalo uh, calf management from birth to the uh, weaning that was the first one then about uh, buffalo heifers and cow management. Um, uh, then the, uh, a, another one was uh, on the reproductive management. We talk about uh, puberty and uh, uh, seasonality and artificial uh, insemination in buffalo. And then we talk about the product. The, the fourth webinar was on milk and uh, milk product. And um, uh, <laughs> the other one on uh, uh, buffalo meat production and uh, regarding either the, um, the the breeding of the male for the the the, the meat and uh, also the quality of the the carcass and uh, uh, the quality of uh, of uh, of the meat this uh, last one appointment is about sustainability on uh, uh, buffalo farming in so sustainability in buffalo production and uh, we <laughs> we will have a talk uh, uh, by Antonella Chiariotti that is uh, from CREA and by Angelo Fierro from University of Naples. I will introduce this uh, uh, colleague after the, um, the welcome of Professor Borghese that uh, uh, are, are here. So Professor Borghese, I, I, and I remember Professor Borghese is the general secretary at OBF for the, uh, the people that <coughs> is not um, involved in our association. And uh, I give the, the floor to, to give you a, a welcome. Please, Professor Borghese. Good afternoon and a welcome in uh, this last webinar of this series. It very, was very important for the International Buffalo Federation to communicate uh, with you uh, with the webinars and uh, now other activities of the International Buffalo Federation are the fifth uh, training course on buffalo management and industry that will be held uh, on, from 9 to 19 of May of this year. And uh, the World Buffalo Congress that will be held in Caracas, Venezuela on November. I invite all of you to participate to this event that uh, are a very focal point of the activity of the Federation. Goodbye. Thank you, Professor Borghese. I just want uh, uh, to um, reassume the, um, the people involved, involved uh, in, uh, in this webinar, the participation of the people that uh, uh, we have, we had um, more than 120 people in mean in each webinar. And the, um, the view of the registration are more, more than uh, 900. So this means that uh, it's, 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 um, it's, it has been interested. Uh, now I'm uh, <clears throat> introducing the first, uh, the first, the first um, speaker of today, uh, Dr. Antonella Chiariotti, that is, a, a, <clears throat> sorry, a, 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 my colleague here at CREA, um, 
the Center for Animal Production and Aquaculture. Antonella Dr. Chieriotti uh, is a master in agricultural uh, science. Uh, as I told you, is a research scientist here in the Animal Production uh, Center of the CREA. And uh, they res uh, <coughs> Her research activity was focused on the rumen microbial ecology in, uh, in ruminants, uh, with particular interest in sustainability related aspects. Uh, her research activity in the, in the last decade uh, involved also industrial bioraffinery and uh, microbial, microbial microbial activity during the anaerobic digestion process for uh, biogas production uh, from <clears throat> agro-industrious waste. Uh, Dr. Antorella is also a secret, uh, member of the Secretariat of International Buffalo Federation, is a member of, uh, also of the Rumen Microbial Genomic Network. Um, Antonella, the floor is yours. Microphone. Uh, good afternoon. Can you see the can you see the presentation? Oh, they run the touch. No, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the nutritional strategies to mitigate emission in livestock. Uh, and um, but uh, let's start with the um, definition of sustainability adopted by the European Commission which is a sustainable development uh, means meeting the needs of the present while ensuring future generations can meet their own, their own needs. Um, on this uh, uh, definition, the United Nations in uh, to, uh, 2015 agreed uh, for a set of uh, 17 sustainable development goals uh, uh, that form the Agenda 2030, and they uh, cover all the aspects of human uh, development from uh, zero hunger to peace and justice. So the concept of sustainability uh, is, uh, um, uh, is complex and uh, is composed by different aspects, uh, so-called three pillars, economic, environmental and social. Uh, each one of uh, these pillars covers different aspects of the sustainability, but so to have uh, an integrated approach to environmental, social, economic uh, impact uh, and so the sustainable profit growth, uh, we have to cover all these three aspects. Uh, uh, according to the estimates, uh, uh, the world uh, uh, population is living now uh, for the 50% in uh, cities or large uh, towns, uh, uh, but this is going to increase uh, up to 67% by 2050. Uh, and this is, uh, has already changed uh, um, the rural economy uh, through uh, um, uh, diversification of the rural uh, income in uh, um, non-farm activities uh, and uh, this transformation um, also uh, has to go uh, hand in hand with the increase in agricultural productivity. So uh, there are several drivers that uh, uh, that led to the development of the livestock sector. The first one is the population growth. Uh, in fact, they are going, we are going to be uh, more than 9 billion in a few years. Or um, another one is the gross domestic product, uh, which increased, especially in uh, uh, developing countries, uh, the urbanization, as we have seen, and globalization of the market. Uh, all these aspects have led to the growing demand for uh, livestock products, uh, dairy and meat, uh, and, and led to a development of the uh, livestock sector that included uh, intensification both uh, in, uh, in uh, farm management and uh, um, products, uh, in a structural change of the uh, food industry and the technical management and transportation of the goods. But uh, it also came with concerns uh, because the um, development of the livestock sector is very important for food security, 
for the nutrition of uh, human population and for its livelihood. Um, together with the concern about the animal health and welfare, especially in uh, intensive system. And last but not least, the climate change, uh, especially because of the uh, methane emission and uh, uh, together with the natural resource depletion, which is uh, uh, which are all very important topics. So let's see uh, which is the contribution of methane uh, to the global warming uh, as greenhouse gas. Uh, it is represented by 16% uh, between the greenhouse gases and uh, uh, it's a very potent greenhouse gas for different uh, aspects. Uh, for example, uh, it traps uh, 84 times more um, heat than uh, carbon dioxide, is responsible for half of the rise in ozone level, or uh, uh, accounts for one third of climate forcing. Uh, and there is uh, uh, there was a, a high increase uh, in the last uh, 260 years, uh, of its concentration in the atmosphere. Uh, where does the uh, methane um, come? Uh, for the 60% we see uh, it comes from human activity and uh, uh, ruminants in particular through the enteric fermentation, as we can see in this figure, represent 60% of the global uh, methane emission. Uh, buffalo and small ruminants are just 50% uh, of this. Uh, the, most of the emission, according to this uh, estimate of the emission intensity, uh, is represented by meat. As you can see, uh, we have beef and a small ruminants meat. But we also have to uh, consider other aspects of the developing of the livestock, uh, the livestock uh, sector. Uh, we know that uh, 700 uh, more than 700 million people live uh, in uh, in uh, poor. Uh, rural uh, and marginal areas, and more than a half of these um, are poor livestock keepers. Moreover, uh, the ruminant production uh, sometimes is the only practical mean of food production, especially in dry areas or in rangeland and pasture um, that covers also, uh, uh, more than 70% of agricultural land. Uh, where no other cultivation are, are possible. Uh, so, uh, but uh, as I said, there is a concern about this development of the livestock sector um, due to the effect on climate change. And uh, researchers in a recent study have identified multiple uh, options for reducing uh, the emission, uh, as you can see in the red bar in this uh, figure. And the main one is represented by carbon sequestration due to improvement of grazing management. But there are also some uh, uh, other uh, possibility of improvement uh, by additive use or animal management. So, but uh, where does the methane come from? Uh, we know that uh, um, uh, ruminants uh, are able to to thrive uh, on plant material because they have uh, they have a, a, a relationship uh, with the microorganism in the rumen, which is uh, a, a biological fermenter. We can say uh, where they live and they. Um, are able to uh, degrade plant material in different substances, including the um, uh, protein, bacterial protein, which are uh, in need for the animal to uh, survive. This biological process through the methanogens or archaea produce the, uh, methane, which is uh, a sort of byproduct uh, and also is an energy loss of, uh, of the diet. So, uh, as the methanogens are the sole producers of, uh, of methane, we could say that uh, the more the increase in number um, should be associated with the greater production of uh, methane. Uh, this is not so. Uh, in fact, methanogens community composition, rather than uh, its size, is uh, uh, directly correlated with the methane production. Uh, the diversity of this um, community the bacterial community is influenced by uh, hydrogen availability and uh, by the interaction uh, within and between the, the um, hydrogen producing microbes in the rumen. Um, 
what we can do about uh, so the mitigation strategy that have been developed uh, uh, in the last years are main three three main roads. Uh, animal and feed management, diet formulation, and rumen manipulation. And we are going to uh, have a general overview of the second two. So the uh, so-called first generation biotechnology that include feed and feeding practice, such as, for example, feeding concentrate or precision feeding or uh, improved foliage quality, are the uh, traditional classic technology uh, focus on the um, uh, nutritional optimization of the of the ratio. Um, they also consider diet components, for example, the type of carbohydrates. We are going to see a little bit more detail about this later. Uh, and they have a small uh, risk associated with increased productivity and high reduction potential. So about the forage quality, uh, we can improve the forage quality. We can uh, uh, give, uh, we can feed the animal with less mature plant. We can uh, shift from uh, C4 to C3 plants. Uh, we can uh, um, graze on less mature plant. Why this? Uh, because the, um, this kind of forage, this quality of forage, have higher amount of uh, easily fermentable carbohydrates have less uh, uh, neutral detergent fiber and higher digestibility. And this uh, could also uh, lead to an increase in dry matter intake uh, and reduce, of course, the retention time in the rumen. Uh, nevertheless, forage quality has also the, some negative aspect to, to be taken into consideration. Um, improving the animal co uh, performances through the um, uh, nutrition and feeding can increase the methane emission per unit of animal product. And this could lead the farmer, the breeder, to increase the stocking rate. Uh, and this cause no change or even increase uh, uh, in, uh, in global emission. Moreover, the increased grain consumption in production uh, can cause more uh, uh, nitrogen oxide and emission during the grain uh, production. So we can say that uh, is not um, a well-defined uh, uh, modeling or, or um, uh, strategy, but it still needs uh, to understand the relationship between the improvement of uh, diet and other aspects, such as voluntary intake, uh, stocking rates, and uh, net uh, meat and production. Then we have the two uh, generation technologies, the second generation technology, which include feed supplements, uh, supplements and additives. And this technology uh, have the potential to reduce the methane emission, uh, um, providing alternative hydrogen sink or changing the rumen uh, microbial population. Uh, nevertheless, these are a recently developed technique uh, the mitigation uh, uh, potential is uh, still not uh, completely clear. Uh, most of the time are expensive and, and there is um, uh, a lot of work to do uh, to understand the interactive effect with other sources or associated risk. Uh, in these uh, uh, categories, we include the lipids. Uh, it's important uh, uh, when we supplement, we add the lipids to the diet to know the fat source, where do they come from, the quantity that we include, the fatty acid profile, and the form of fats in which we include it in the diet. Uh, uh, they uh, um, cause, they produce a reduction in the fabe digestion uh, and consequently a decrease in dry matter intake a decrease also in organic matter fermentation um, and a decrease in uh, the activity of microorganisms, especially the methanogens, a reduction in the protozoa number, and also uh, the, um, through the biohydrogenation, which is um, a fermentation pathway that the uh, uh, undergo uh, goes in the rumen, uh, they uh, use the hydrogen uh, produced uh, to biohydrogenate uh, long chain uh, fatty acid to unsaturated fatty acids. Um, 
Another uh, additive we can use are the seaweeds. So we have three kinds of uh, algae, um, the brown, the red and the green uh, algae. And uh, this, uh, uh, the algae are rich in uh, different various uh, uh, bioactive compounds, such as protein, carbohydrates and other uh, compounds uh, in the mechanism of action is through the bromoform, uh, which is um, uh, included in in uh, in the algae, in the seaweed, and the bromoform has been known uh, to inhibit the um, methane biosynthetic pathway uh, in the methanogens. Um, even in this case, uh, as this study are done in um, experimental level, not a, a large scale or large farm level, uh, there is still to be clarified the potential poten positive and negative, um, uh, also economic impacts of this technique. Uh, then we have uh, 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 some uh, other additives uh, that can uh, inhibit directly the, the methanogens, the meta, uh, methanogenesis, or uh, they can alter the pathway that leads to uh, the reduction of the substrates. Um, we have enzymes, uh, but the research is very limited on this. We have ionophores, uh, but uh, as, uh, as some uh, could have uh, an harmful effect on, uh, on human, uh, this family of additives is not allowed in many countries, Europe uh, included. We have essential oils or plant metabolites uh, that have uh, a, a few positive aspects, uh, uh, such as antimicrobial properties or inhibit rumen archaea. But they also have uh, uh, um, some defects. Uh, the, the main one is that in vivo, uh, they don't when they're used in vivo and not in, uh, in laboratory, uh, they um, are not so effective, uh, probably due to the mecha mechanism of adaptation of, uh, of the rumen itself. Uh, we have also organic acid, but the, the research on, on this is limited yet. Yeah. So uh, the last one is the rumen manipulation and uh, can be done through uh, three ways, uh, vaccination, uh, defaunation and direct fed microbials. Uh, uh, the vaccination is uh, uh, still an experimental um, phase as is, is not uh, uh, so effective, I will explain uh, later why. Uh, the defaunation has been, has been employed in different species, uh, so the, the um, elimination of rumen protozoa, uh, which are symbiotically uh, linked to the methanogens and also produce hydrogen that could be used to produce methane. Um, but uh, this is not an effective way, has been shown to be not an effective way because the, um, the, the situation, the rumen restores the um, protozoa after a while due to the same mechanism of other things that I was talking before. Uh, the last one is direct fed microbials, and this could be done, this biological control could be done uh, using competitive or, or predatory microbes, um, such as methane oxidizing bacteria, for example, that can grow on uh, methane as a sole carbon and energy source. So uh, what are the difficulties that we can uh, encounter in rumen manipulation? Uh, the research in this uh, topic is an early stage, so we need more investigation. There are yet, as the rumen is, uh, um, is not a well-known environment, insufficient uh, information on effect on methanogen species. And uh, the methanogen diversity um, uh, is influenced by the diet. So, for example, to develop a vaccine, um, uh, we, we could have uh, different uh, substances in uh, different conditions in different regions. So it's not uh, valuable uh, everywhere. So what are the problem of the mitigation techniques that we are in encountering? Uh, the first one is that uh, uh, there is, uh, we, we should find an accurate quantitative estimation of the mitigation potential um, in, uh, uh, in vivo condition and in different uh, production system. 
because usually the ruminant production uh, is a low input system, uh, as we have seen in poor uh, rural areas and operating at low cost, and uh, also is, uh, uh, is a very complex um, sector. Uh, so the differences are uh, at many level because of their geographical condition, the atmosphere, the political situation and so on. Uh, there is also limited awareness of the opportunity and benefit of using the mitigation technique. There is a gap in the knowledge, and also in uh, both in the in the um, in the breeders and the institutional uh, uh, institutional uh, institutes. And also, as I said, the complexity of the rumen, uh, which is not uh, yet uh, completely known. Uh, the last one is the cost of mitigation action, which sometimes are very expensive. Uh, also, if you consider that we have to develop long term studies. So what we can uh, conclude, what what what's the needs for uh, the research to focus on? Uh, well, we should uh, study more the pasture-based livestock rearing system uh, to develop uh, mitigation strategy can be adapted to pastures. Uh, we should uh, mm, uh, evaluate the combined effect of various mitigation strategies that usually are, are studied singular, singularly. We need to investigate the effect of uh, uh, mitigation strategy on non-lactating, on, on growing animals. Usually they are done on, uh, on productive animals. Uh, identifying uh, which is the um, uh, which are the obstacles uh, for the spread of uh, this technique in uh, uh, to a large scale, uh, especially in different um, income countries. And uh, so uh, we consider that the most multidisciplinary approach uh, they are taking into account the environment, the livestock management, diet, uh, and the microbiome, of course, uh, seems to be the best approach to find uh, a long-term solution for the reduction of enteric methane in ruminants. Thank you.